This is why I quit drinking alcohol after 15 years. Did 500 days sober and then started drinking again. So I've been asked by every Tom, Dick and Harry why I don't drink. Whenever you tell people you don't drink, yeah. they always want an explanation. Alcohol is the only drug that people will question you why you don't do. So in this video, we're gonna go through five things. Firstly, my personal story and why I decided to quit. The surprising benefits I found from quitting alcohol, the surprising negatives and drawbacks, some tools that can help you to quit and why I decided to start drinking again. So firstly, I was never an alcoholic. I never beat my kids and my wife didn't leave me, which is what people always assume when you say you've quit alcohol. Well, what ha well, what ha was it a problem? Was you beating your kids? <laughs> Did you ruin marriages? Did you kill somebody in the vehicle? Like all young teenagers in the UK, I started drinking when I was around 15. This is when I started going to parties, socializing a bit more, speaking to members of the opposite sex. And it was just a thing to do. I remember the first time I had a drink was around a friend's house. We had just managed to get some alcohol using some fake IDs. And I don't really recall how it made me feel, but I remember it's fun and it was a good excuse for me and my friends to just do silly stuff and not feel judged or like we were judging ourselves. Then after a few years of high school, I went to medical school. For any of those who have been to university, you know that university is essentially just drinking. And particularly in medicine, I think maybe because it's a slightly higher stress environment, a lot of overachievers and also maybe being introduced to kind of things that are kind of traumatic. I think a lot of medical students way of coping with that is drinking to excess. Most of my medical school days were spent either intoxicated or hungover. And my drinking pattern was basically just binge drinking with the occasional odd drink here and there with a meal. But I was definitely drinking about at least once per week, sometimes twice, sometimes even more, depending how many student union nights out there were. And I'd get so drunk that sometimes I would just completely black out. In fact, multiple times I just completely black out. I was hospitalized a couple of, couple of times. Yeah, it was all just the thing to do. And to be honest, I don't regret that period of my life. It was appropriate for that time, but now I'm in a different stage of my life where I no longer need alcohol or view alcohol as an important part of living. I think looking back, my main reasons for drinking was really to sedate a quite bad social anxiety I had. And when you're at uni, everyone around you is drinking and having alcohol just felt like a really good way to just relax and not worry about what other people think of you, let loose and have a bit of fun. I remember during this period, I encountered one other student who decided not to drink. At the time, I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand why someone would elect not to partake in this activity, which I thought was so fun and so important. Then after university, I continued my drinking uh, as my first couple of years as a doctor with a similar binge, rest, occasional drink during the week with a meal or on the weekend, but it was a lot less frequent as compared to medical school. And as I was getting a little bit older, I did encounter another friend who also decided not to drink. But I was getting to a point in my life where I kind of understood why she would choose not to drink. She was someone who was a big drink at university as well. She was a captain of her basketball team. And of course they had socials every week where they'd be drinking to excess. And I remember really respecting her decision not to drink. I didn't feel like it's something I could ever do, but I thought it was really cool that she had the courage and the balls not to drink, but still socialize. She was the most social person I knew at the time. But again, I didn't think not drinking was for me. I really needed it and relied on it to get through social situations. I couldn't comprehend going to a big event with loads of different people and just having to raw dog it and not sedate my social anxiety in some way. And I actually had convinced myself that alcohol was required to be social. And because I deemed social health as such an important aspect of health, that one couldn't exist without the other. But deep down, I knew that I wasn't doing something right for me. I always had this sense that, of course it wasn't good for me, but for me in particular, it just wasn't right. But I continued to do it because it was just a good way to, to numb myself from really feeling what I didn't want to feel. And then after a couple of years of work, I decided to go traveling, which of course, there's a lot of drinking involved. When you're in Asia, the beers are so cheap and it's a good way to bond and make friendships. And I met a lot of people through alcohol. Whether or not I formed lasting relationships using alcohol, that's debatable, but there was a lot of alcohol involved. And then after traveling, I moved to Australia, I continued to work there. And that was almost like going back to uni. Every single UK doctor gone to Australia was there to have a good time, 
to party and a lot more alcohol was involved. A couple more years of this, I think I was around age 29, I started thinking more and more about not drinking because most people would agree that hangovers do get worse as you age and I think hangovers were getting particularly bad for me. And then something happened which tipped me over into not drinking. And I always say there's two people in my life who stopped me from drinking. The first one is Andrew Huberman and the second one is my fiance. And let me explain why. So one day I was driving in the car with my fiance and we we're listening to the Huberman podcast about alcohol. If you haven't listened to it, it's really good, really informative. He goes through all the detrimental effects of alcohol on your physical health, your mental health and your performance. And it really did put me off. I'm not gonna be talking about the physical and mental negative effects of alcohol in this video. I'll probably save that for another one. But in this episode, he talks about how alcohol affects everyone in different ways, which sounds really obvious to say, but it's something that I was kind of blind to. He talks about how some people, particularly of Northern European descent, when they have a drink of alcohol, it just boosts their baseline dopamine they get a real sense of joy from it. They get a real sense of increased energy from it. And then there's other people who they drink alcohol and they don't really get that same positive or enjoyable effect. Maybe they feel a bit more sleepy. And of course, it's all a spectrum. So after this episode, I'm walking with my fiance and I ask her, so how does alcohol make you feel? And she said, after having two glasses of wine, she feels like how she feels after meditating for an hour. And in that moment, I was kind of blown away because I have never experienced that. This intense relaxation and peace that she was describing to me is just something that I've never achieved through alcohol. And then I really started to question, if alcohol isn't that enjoyable for me, why do I continue to do it despite making me feel like garbage? And then I really started to pay attention to how alcohol is making me feel. If you have a drink or two or three or more and you just really tune in to how you're feeling, is it a positive experience? And in my case, I'd say probably not. It definitely feels different to being sober, but the only reason it's positive is because of all the positive associations that you've made with it, all the social interactions, all the laughs and the jokes with your friends, which exists independently of alcohol. So the last time I had a proper drink and got drunk was on my 30th birthday. And I wish I could tell you I woke up the next day really hungover and just decided then and there I'm just gonna quit forever. It was definitely more of a gradual process I had these things in my mind from Huberman and my fiance, and I think I had about three more drinks after turning 30. But eventually I decided I want to give this alcohol-free lifestyle a chance. So I just committed to not drinking. And then one month turned into two months, two months turned into five months, and then eventually I'd done a whole year. And to be honest, it felt great. And now I wanna tell you about all the positive effects and surprising benefits that I found from not drinking alcohol. So I already described to you how I was very anxious during med school and I would often use alcohol to sedate my social anxiety. But it wasn't just in social situations that I felt anxious. I actually felt anxious pretty much every morning waking up going into uni. And now looking back through a sober lens, I can say alcohol probably played a huge role in me feeling anxious every single day because I was either intoxicated or hung over pretty much consistently for five years. And having quit, I, of course I still feel anxious, but I don't just feel anxious for no reason on a Tuesday afternoon. I remember sometimes I would just be, there would literally be nothing going on, nothing for me to be worrying about. And I'd just be feeling anxious randomly during the week. And then I'd remember, oh yeah, I had a massive weekend on Friday and Saturday. I drank loads. I was tired, but not too hungover on Sunday. And then the hangover kicked in, which it always usually kicked in about two days later for me. So getting rid of alcohol, just got rid of that no reason anxiety that I'd be experiencing all the time. The second thing I noticed hugely was I finally achieved the physique that I was aiming for. I worked out quite a lot during medical school. I was part of the swimming team. We'd swim like two times a week at least. Um, I was doing calisthenics at least three times a week, but I never really achieved the physique that I wanted. And now looking back again, I put it down to alcohol and the fact that I just wasn't able to train at maximum capacity. I wasn't sleeping properly to recover from workouts. And I was probably messing up my testosterone by having just chronically elevated levels of alcohol in my bloodstream. And yeah, when I cut down alcohol after university, I did notice my body improve. But when I really saw the most gains, the most jacked and the most ripped, the most lean I've ever been, is post quitting alcohol. This video is about three months after quitting alcohol. And honestly, I hadn't changed anything else. I was still training the same. I was eating the same. The only difference was I wasn't drinking alcohol. 
my confidence improved. And I don't mean in like a kind of a weird Dutch courage kind of sense. I mean, my genuine confidence and my ability to believe in myself and my ability to face things that are difficult for me improved. I told you I mostly used alcohol to sedate a social anxiety. Now I can enter a social situation and not feel like I need a crutch, not feel like I need to rely on something to get me through it. And it's not like I don't feel socially anxious. I still get that feeling, but instead of seeing that as a bad thing to run away from, I now see it as something that is just part of being a human being. We've evolved to want to be accepted by our tribe and especially if we're meeting new people, it's an evolutionary adaptation to feel slightly anxious. And now I kind of treat socializing or meeting new people as very similar to having a cold shower. Like I used to hate having cold showers. I used to dread it. I used to get nervous and apprehensive before I jumped in. Once you're in it, it's fine and then afterwards you feel great. That's very much how I see my social life now. And through doing this, I feel like my social skills have actually improved because before I was always in a state where I wasn't really having to socialize because I would just drink through it. Now I can actually focus in conversation. I can actually remember a conversation, remember all the people that I've met. And yeah, there might be a little bit of tension at the start, but that always goes away. Just give it 20, 30 minutes. That that nervous feeling you get when you meet someone for the first time, it goes away anyway. You don't need to sedate yourself through it. Just give it time. One thing that I was worried about when I quit alcohol was losing out on that kind of silliness that comes with alcohol when you're just doing stupid stuff and you're joking around, you're laughing, and you can kind of get away with doing stuff that you wouldn't do sober. Now, I was at a wedding just this weekend, actually, uh, with all my old uni friends and the thing that we used to do together was drink together and do stupid things. I was at this wedding, an amazing wedding by the way, we really enjoyed it. And of course everyone else was getting completely plastered. And there was no point in the evening that I felt left out. And we were still doing stupid, silly shit and I was still joining in, like getting on each other's shoulders, throwing the groom up and down in the air and spinning our mates on the dance floor. And in fact, I found being silly like that whilst remaining sober was kind of like getting in touch with that inner child but without being inebriated in some weird way. I think we all want a bit of silliness in our life and we don't need alcohol to do that. There's nothing stopping you from having fun, just doing stupid stuff because it's funny. And realizing that I don't need alcohol to do stuff like that is super liberating. It's, yeah, it's one of the best feelings. And one surprising thing I noticed was when I stopped drinking, I didn't have to put as much energy into managing my emotions, my mood, and I could put more energy into being productive, being creative. And I actually found that my most creative and productive period was just after quitting drinking. And in fact, all the videos that I was working on suddenly became better. I actually started seeing some videos go viral on TikTok and YouTube even. And of course it wasn't just from quitting alcohol, but I feel like having more mental space and more mental energy allowed me to focus more on that task and just do it better. And the final benefit that I love about not drinking is I no longer need to choose to feel unwell anymore. Of course, I'm gonna get sick again in my life. I'm gonna get a cold, I'm gonna get gastro, diarrhea, whatever, and maybe get more severe illnesses, but I never need to inflict it upon myself. I never need to choose to do it to myself, which is a fantastic feeling. So we've been over the benefits. What are the negatives and what are the drawbacks of not drinking? And why have I decided to start drinking again? So I would say by far the biggest drawback of not drinking is the social pressure. We don't live in bubbles. We live in communities. And when everyone else is drinking, you feel like you should be as well. It's a part of trying to fit in the tribe, trying to fit in for survival. And unfortunately, we still live in a society which sees drinking as normal and not drinking as abnormal. Even my own GP, my own family doctor, asked me at his clinic the other day, why don't you drink? Which when you think about it is ridiculous. There's no other drug that he would have asked, why don't you do it? If I told him I didn't smoke, he would have never have asked me, why don't you smoke? If I told him I don't do crack, he would have never asked me, why don't you do crack? But for some reason, alcohol has slipped through the net and it's just completely normalized to just for everyone to be drinking. But we can't believe you don't drink poison. <laughs> Explain to us why you don't drink poison. <laughs> and I really look forward to the day that alcohol is seen like smoking, where people 
can continue to smoke if they wish to. People can continue to drink if they wish to, but people won't be questioned about not doing it. I won't need to make videos like this explaining myself why I'm not drinking alcohol because it will just be a socially acceptable thing to do. But yeah, now at the moment, not drinking is still socially awkward. People still get uncomfortable when you tell them that you don't drink. If you tell people you don't drink, people either think you're boring or people think you have a serious problem where you beat your kids or your wife left you because you drank too much. So yeah, that is a drawback, but there are ways you can manage it. Don't use your not drinking as a reason not to socialize. In fact, you should probably try and socialize more when you quit drinking. If you think it would be impossible to go to a social event and not drink because everyone would be drinking around you and you'd feel really left out and you'd have all these cravings, you can maybe consider doing something else that's social that doesn't involve alcohol. And trust me, there are a lot of things. And remember this, if you need a drink to enjoy a personal thing, you don't enjoy that personal thing. And one of the other drawbacks of quitting alcohol is, yes, I still get cravings for a pale ale or a nice cold lager on a summer's day, but I have found ways to mitigate these cravings, which I'll discuss in the next part of this video. So how do you mitigate cravings to consume alcohol? First things first, I'm not drinking beer. This is a 0% beer. And to be honest, these have been a complete lifesaver for me. For a long time, I was too self-conscious to tell people that I wasn't drinking. So I would just order a zero beer and drink that. And literally no one can tell that you're drinking a zero beer. They look the exact same. And the packaging has come along so far that they don't have some big 0% written on every single beer that you drink. So I didn't even need to tell anyone that I wasn't drinking in a social situation. And the other benefit of these is that they actually taste so good now with so many companies investing in making zero beers that would really hit the craving of wanting a beer. A very fun side fact is that all these alcohol companies are now investing in zero alcohol because it's so profitable for them. The price between zero beers and normal alcoholic beers is very marginal. They pretty much charge the exact same thing. However, these companies don't get taxed on non-alcohol beers. So there's a huge push to create loads of zero beers because they can just make more money essentially. So yeah, I was a secret non-drinker for a very long time just using zero beers. And eventually when I plucked up enough courage, I told people that I wasn't drinking and it was absolutely fine. It did take me a while though. If you don't like beer, there are other alcohol alternatives. So they've got alcohol-free wine, doesn't taste as good in my opinion. They've also got alcohol-free gin and stuff like that. And then you can just always just order yourself a lime and soda at the bar. That was a good go-to if I didn't fancy a zero beer. You've got your soft drinks, you've got your sugary drinks. And I would say when you're weaning off the alcohol, let yourself have a sugary drink, it's fine. Obviously you don't wanna be doing it forever and then eventually wean down the sugary drinks, maybe change it to a diet drink and you'll feel much better overall. And sometimes you will forget why you've quit alcohol. There's been a number of times people just come up to me and ask me when I'm not drinking, oh, why don't you drink? And I will have to kind of reflect and think about why I don't drink. A really good way to remind yourself is to, is to find things online or read books which have certain messages and certain quotes about drinking alcohol, the benefits of not drinking and the negatives of drinking. One really good one I found was something called the Reframe app which is an app, but they also have an Instagram page and they just regularly post stuff about the benefits of not drinking. I also joined the email newsletter where they would just send me an email every so often with some more reasons to not drink. And I found that really motivating actually, just getting a little thing in my inbox telling me a good reason not to drink. Because you do forget when it's been so long and your new positive life just becomes so normalized, it's easy to forget why you're not doing the thing that everyone else is doing. Please bear in mind, if you have an alcohol dependence, as in you're drinking every single day, high volumes, don't quit suddenly. Please seek help, please see your doctor because there are actually some risks associated with stopping alcohol suddenly. Um, you can get stuff like alcohol withdrawal seizures. So if you do consider yourself a heavy drinker, so I'd say if you're drinking every day, please see your GP and get some help with quitting your drinking. There are certain methods that you need to follow when you're quitting from high alcohol intake to zero alcohol intake. Now you've watched this all the way to the end of the video, which I thank you very much for. And you're probably wondering why I started drinking again. So I basically quit drinking when I was 30. And then when I turned 31, I decided to have a drink. Let me explain the thought process behind that. So I was in Vietnam with my missus. We were on a motorbike loop driving around North Vietnam and it was my birthday. 
We stopped off at a nice hostel. There's a beautiful sunset. And I felt like I had given myself enough time off alcohol that I was fully in control again. And I just wanted to see what it tastes like, see how it felt. So I had half a beer. I got extremely tipsy just off half a beer. I did also have it on empty stomach. And of course my tolerance would have been in my boots. It went straight to my head. And actually I didn't really enjoy the feeling of being drunk. I remember my missus was talking to a couple of other people at the hostel and I just had all these intrusive thoughts and I was feeling agitated and angry. And I was like, I really don't like this feeling. So I actually ended up pouring away the other half of that beer. Then the following day we went to a different hostel and we stayed with this lovely Vietnamese family. They knew it was my birthday so they had went and got me a cake. They prepared this massive meal and they asked me if I wanted a beer. I said no, but then they started doing this kind of fun ritual where they'd all cheers, say a few words, lift the drink up and down. And I kind of felt like I should as part of a way to respect their culture. So I was like, I'll at least hold a beer. So I had one of the beers we did the traditional thing and then I drank about half of it again. This time I did it on full stomach so I didn't have to feel those negative effects. Then I gave the other half to my missus to finish. And now I've decided from a year and a half of being sober what my approach to alcohol is going to be. And I stole this from a really good book called How to Calm Your Mind by Chris Bailey. And he talks about drinking only when there's a novelty drink or in novel situations. So an example of this would be if I was in Scotland and I was in the Scottish Highlands and we went on a whiskey brewery tour, I would obviously try whiskey there. Or if I was in Munich and it was Oktoberfest, I would have a beer. But there's a caveat to that. And if I find myself in a social situation where there's a novel drink, I can only drink once that social anxiety is settled. So I'd never want to associate getting rid of social anxiety with alcohol. I want it to be me and then I have a drink after I've settled down. Another example is a novel situation. So I was at a different wedding of a friend who's big into his drinking and I knew it would mean a lot to him if I had a drink with him at his wedding. So I went to the bar, got a couple of whiskeys and I had a drink with him then. And I know he really appreciated me doing that. We sat down at the bride and groom table. We had a whiskey together, had a chat and it was really nice. Now I've got to this place after 500 days of being sober. Of course, if you were a full-blown alcoholic and you know that if you have a drink, one drink will lead to two, to three, to four, and it's a slippery slope for you, obviously you need to abstain from alcohol completely. But I've come to a point where I understand my relationship with alcohol now, and I no longer need to rely on it as a crutch. It's not a slippery slope for me. I can just have one drink and be fine. But I think for those people on the fence about they're drinking, a period of abstinence is really important before you introduce alcohol again. I think you don't really see the full benefits unless you just get rid of alcohol completely. And you really need to be able to compare your two lives. So your life of drinking and your life of not drinking. If you've kind of done it halfway, you can't truly compare the difference. So what I'd recommend is just give yourself 30 days of no alcohol. Continue to do everything you do, continue to socialize, continue to go out and have nice food pair it with a zero beer or a zero alcohol drink. And I do really think there are certain people that drinking alcohol is a net positive in their lives. So for example, my fiance, she loves a glass of red wine. She's half Italian and she used to drink a glass of red wine or two glasses of red wine every single day. She's now cut that down dramatically, but she still really enjoys a red wine. And I don't think it subtracts from her life by having that in her life. But for some people, the net negatives are gonna outweigh the net positives. And the only way to know is by trying it for yourself. I really hope you enjoyed that video. I'll see you next week. Keep training, keep living, peace. Like if I was to tell somebody, man, I don't never drink water, they'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs>